SpaceX will soon be deploying a new generation of Starlink broadband satellite systems which could enable the company to deal with surging demand. The most recent Starlink launch occurred on December 17 and launch calendars indicate that SpaceX is planning another Starlink mission for December 28 pending weather and technical issues. Welcome to Smarter Tech, and in this video, we'll take a look at everything you need to know about the upcoming Starlink Gen 2 satellite launches and further updates from SpaceX. SpaceX has informed the U.S. Federal Communications Commission that it intends to launch its first Starlink Gen 2 satellites by the end of 2022. The FCC only recently granted SpaceX partial approval for its Starlink Gen 2 constellation, which has been under consideration since May 2020 to launch in late November 2022. Only a few weeks later, SpaceX stated in several filings requesting the FCC to expedite special temporary authority requests that would permit it to fully test and communicate with its first next-generation satellite prototypes that it anticipates that it will begin launching Gen 2 satellites before the end of December. SpaceX seems to be asking the FCC to add Starlink Gen 2 satellites as authorized points of communication for already licensed user terminals and ground stations in the majority of the main STA requests filed in early December. Its new high-performance dishes, latest base model dishes, both fixed as well as in motion, and first-generation dishes are among them. While the FCC's recent actions on Starlink do not inspire confidence in its consistency, objectivity, or logic, these requests should be granted. SpaceX also wants permission to activate VHF beacons, which are supposed to be installed on all Starlink Gen 2 satellites. Those beacons would act as a backup to existing telemetry, tracking, and command antennas, reducing the likelihood of a total loss of control by allowing SpaceX to maintain contact with Gen 2 satellites regardless of their orientation, which would obviously improve the safety of Starlink orbital operations. Given how long the FCC took to review SpaceX Starlink Gen 2 applications and how arbitrary it was with its partial Gen 2 license grant, it is difficult to predict whether the FCC will grant these SDA requests or how long it will take if it does. The FCC has granted SpaceX approval to begin launching up to 7,500 Starlink Gen 2 satellites but has not given SpaceX permission to use those satellites to interact with user terminals. To the FCC's credit, no Constellation operator has ever been ready to launch satellites less than one month after launch approval, and it's likely that the processes to ensure those satellites can be used properly after launch are still in progress. Furthermore, due to the FCC's arbitrary license restrictions, SpaceX is not permitted to launch or operate any Starlink Gen 2 satellites above a certain altitude. Starlink Gen 2 satellites will likely take two to three months after launch to reach operational orbits, at which point SpaceX will be able to begin using them in earnest. As long as the majority of SpaceX December 2022 STA requests are approved, the disruption to Starlink Gen 2 deployment and on-orbit testing should be minimal. While SpaceX scheduled targets for future projects are often easily dismissed, there is evidence that SpaceX will attempt to launch the first Starlink Gen 2 satellites before the end of the year. SpaceX received permission earlier this month to communicate with a Falcon 9 rocket for a mission called Starlink 5-1. One of the five orbital shells that comprise SpaceX's first-generation Starlink constellation has no satellites and is awaiting its first launch. However, that shell is polar, which means that its satellites will orbit around Earth's poles, and the STA license granted by the FCC indicates that this launch will be to a more equatorial inclination, which would not be appropriate for a Group 5 launch. It's possible that SpaceX decided to reuse the STA for its first Starlink Gen 2 launch, which it can't currently launch to an inclination other than 53 degrees, roughly the same trajectory outlined by the document. Starlink Gen 1 has two 53-degree shells, Group 1 and Group 4, which are nearly finished and will most likely be referred to as Starlink 1XX or 4XX in FCC filings. When combined with SpaceX VHF Beacon STA request stating that initial Starlink Gen 2 launches will begin in late December 2022, an unofficial manifest suggesting that SpaceX has a Starlink launch scheduled as early as December 28, it appears that the first Gen 2 satellites will reach orbit later this year. 
They're most likely Starlink V2 mini satellites, a downsized variant designed to maximize the efficiency of Falcon 9 Starlink Gen 2 V2 launches while SpaceX's next-generation Starship rocket remains grounded. The Starship optimized Starlink V2 satellites, which SpaceX hoped would be the only version, are said to weigh about 1.25 tons and measure about 6.5 by 2.7 meters. Starlink V2 mini satellites will still be several times larger than today's Starlink V1.5 satellites, weighing up to 800 kilograms and measuring 4.1 by 2.7 meters, according to an October 2022 FCC filing. According to SpaceX, the Starlink V2 mini satellites will also have a pair of massive solar arrays totaling 120 square meters. If V2 mini satellites are roughly as power efficient as V1.5 satellites and use similarly efficient solar arrays, this implies that they could offer 3 to 4 times more usable bandwidth per satellite. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Coming back to the topic, the US Federal Communications Commission has finally granted SpaceX a license for its next-generation Starlink constellation, more than two and a half years after the company began the process of obtaining regulatory approvals for its next-generation Starlink constellation. SpaceX filed its first FCC license application for Starlink Gen 2, an upgraded constellation of 30,000 satellites in May 2020. SpaceX will update its Starlink Gen 2 application in the second half of 2021 to take full advantage of the company's more powerful Starship rocket and further improve the constellation's potential utility. The FCC finally accepted SpaceX Gen 2 application for filing in December 2021, kicking off the final review process. The FCC completed that review on November 29, 2022 and granted SpaceX permission to launch only 7,500 of the 30,000 Starlink Gen 2 satellites it had requested permission for more than 30 months prior. The FCC provided no explanation for its arbitrary 75% reduction nor why the final value is slightly lower than a distinct 7,518 satellite Starlink Gen 1 constellation SpaceX had already been granted a license to deploy in late 2018. To make matters worse, the FCC has repeatedly stated that the total number of satellites SpaceX is authorized to deploy is not increased by our action today but is slightly reduced. That claim reduction is due to the fact that shortly before this decision, SpaceX informed the FCC in good faith that it would voluntarily refrain from launching the dedicated V-band Starlink constellation for which it already had a license in order to significantly reduce the total number of satellites ultimately in orbit. Instead, once Starlink Gen 2 is approved, it will ask for permission to add V-band payloads to a subset of the 29,988 planned Gen 2 satellites, achieving a similar outcome without the need for an additional 7,518 satellites. In response, the FCC reduced the total number of Starlink Gen 2 satellites allowed to less than the number of satellites approved by the FCC's November 2018 Starlink V-band authorization, restricted those satellites to middle ground orbits. This completely precluded Gen 2 launches to higher or lower orbits and failed to structure its compromise in a way that would allow SpaceX to complete three Starlink Gen 2 shells. SpaceX detailed plans to use new E-band antennas on Starlink Gen 2 satellites and next-generation ground stations were barely mentioned in the FCC's partial grant, which simply stated that it will defer acting on the request until further review and coordination with federal users. Starlink Gen 2 is expected to cost at least 30 to 60 billion dollars, supposing an unprecedentedly low 1 to 2 million dollars to build and launch each 50 to 150 Gbps satellite. Assuming SpaceX has once again found a way to utilize all of Falcon 9's available performance, each rocket should be capable of transporting up to 21 Starlink V2 mini satellites to low Earth orbit. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Before that, we'd like to know have you ever used Starlink? Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.